one of Ireland's most famous philosophers, an 18th century philosopher called George Berkeley, who was Anglican bishop. He had this very interesting idea, and that is that God is speaking to us through everything that we see. Everything visible is actually a message in one way or another from God. Now, perhaps that could be taken a little bit too far, but I think certainly when we see the seasons, even the day, that God is speaking to us, to us through what we see, through the seasons, through the changing of the seasons, and through the fading of the day. There's something that becomes really apparent at this time of year, autumn. It's like the twilight of a day. The day, no matter how long, or how bright it has been, how colourful it has been, how lively, it fades into a twilight. When everything goes still, all the colours fade, the light is fading, we're thinking of the, the, the darkness coming. It's a very reflective time. And the same thing with this time of year, as we enter November, and deep into autumn. It is the twilight of the year. And in the same way, no matter how vibrant and how colourful spring and, and uh, summer were, well, we're, we're moving into a time that it's, it's, it's kind of forcing us to reflect that vibrancy and uh, the action of, of uh, spring and summer is over. Now we're left with autumn. And we're forced, I think, by God himself to reflect on our own lives because we kind of subconsciously see a parallel with our own lives. Fairly, youth is springtime, maturity is summer, and then old age is the autumn of our lives. Then finally, death is, as it were, winter. And, and we spontaneously think of this, maybe briefly at a twilight of the day, but in a more drawn-out way, in the twilight of the year in autumn. The church takes this up in November in the liturgy, because it begins to talk about a lot more about death, about those who have died, the holy souls, that we pr pray, or the Church asks us to pray for a lot. We also think at the beginning of November about all the saints, all those in heaven. But the Church is kind of joining hands with nature and saying, look, reflect, reflect on the brevity of your life. Reflect on the fact that you, like the daytime, which at the beginning is full of promise, in its maturity perhaps full of color and vitality, but then as it slips into autumn, that color and vitality fade, which is not always a bad thing. We become more pensive, more reflective. And we think about the coming of winter, the coming of the darkness, the end of the day, the end of the year. We think about the end of our lives and death. And this, according to one of the Psalms, Psalm 90, is actually wisdom. Because in that psalm, it's, you know, we ask God to help us number our days. In other words, to be aware how short our days are, that they are numbered, so that we may get a heart of wisdom, it says. That is wisdom, to know the brevity of our life. Foolishness is the exact opposite. Foolishness is to think in an unreflecting way that this is lasting forever. Uh, like a child, like a child who who you, we've all been there as young children, really uh, unable to imagine uh, long periods of time. For us, a month a month was a huge length of time. You think of your summer holidays when you were a child. They just went on and on forever. I remember being given a book, in fact, 1973. I remember very well. I was six years old. And, and writing in dates, I still have that book somewhere, writing in the, the dates, as in the years, and trying to count up trying to kind of imagine the years into the future. And I was able to get, I remember to 1977, so 1973, 74, 75, 76, 1977, and I remember just stopping because I couldn't imagine beyond that. That just was unimaginable. It's kind of funny. Okay, four years was max thinking into the future. Well, as we grow older, that certainly changes time. We have this sense, this uh, funny sense of time accelerating and a month that flashes by, even years flash by. And this is very important for us. Another psalm 
Psalm 38 says, O Lord, you've shown me my end. How short is the length of my days. Now I know how fleeting is my life. You have given me a short span of days, a mere breath, the man who stood so firm, a mere shadow, the man passing by, a mere breath, the riches he hoards, not knowing who will have them. So that is wisdom, to know that we and our possessions, our riches, are mere breaths, mere shadows, things that are hardly any duration at all, certainly in comparison with eternity, almost no duration. We have to think of this. We have to think of eternity. Now, what happens to us after I die? For, for, for the pagans, this was a great mystery. They knew that the soul could not dissolve at death. The, the pagan philosophers are very clear about that. It can't. It's spirit, and spirit can't dissolve into parts because it has no, no parts. So it, it, it exists after death. But it wasn't clear to them at all what happened after death. And the common opinion was that, well, we went into a shadowy existence, the underworld, Hades, a shadowy existence for forever, really. The church is much clearer, of course, because we have the great benefit of a divine revelation. The church teaches us this. It's in the catechism. Each man receives his eternal retribution in his immortal soul at the very moment of his death, in a particular judgment that refers his life to Christ, either entrance into the blessedness of heaven through a purification or immediately, or immediate and everlasting damnation. So it's crystal clear, it's almost stark. When we die, there's an immediate judgment, the particular judgment, and then hell for those who have rejected God mysteriously or heaven either through purgatory purification or directly let us ask God to give us this gift of wisdom especially the ability to reflect on the brevity of our lives so that we will we'll never have the foolishness of, of acting in such a way that treats this world as something that's lasting even long lasting which it isn't I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. <laughs>